Okay, in this video we'll take a look at another technique for finding limits called rationalizing the numerator. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at something that you've done before called rationalizing the denominator to show you why you need to do this and why it works the way it does. So, first of all, let's look at an example that you would have had from back in algebra called rationalizing the denominator. Now the problem here, you've got something that looks like this. You've got to get this square root out of the denominator. You've got a square root of 5, and you have to get it from the denominator up into the numerator. Now you might remember the way you did this is multiplied by the conjugate of the denominator. Now let me remind you of what that is, which you'd have, think of this as being in parentheses right here. So the square root of 5 plus 3 is in parentheses. Now what the conjugate of the denominator is, when you multiply, it will look like this. The conjugate of the number. If it's the square root of 5 plus 3, then the conjugate would be the square root of 5 minus 3. You change the sign of the second thing. So we're going to multiply this by the conjugate, which would be the square root of 5 minus 3. Now remember, you can't just multiply just the denominator. Whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do the same thing to the top. So we'll also multiply the top by the square root of 5 minus 3. Now when you do this, uh, this thing over this thing is just basically 1, so you're multiplying by 1 so it doesn't change anything. Now when you do this, what you would have would be the following. In the top, you've got 1 times square root of 5 minus 3. This would just be the square root of 5 minus 3. But in the bottom, you've got to FOIL this thing. So you have to FOIL this. So you're going to FOIL these two in the bottom. Now when you do that, you'll get the following. First of all, the first one, square root of 5 times square root of 5 will give you 5. In the outer ones, you've got minus 3 times the square root of 5, so 3 times the square root of 5. In the inner ones, plus 3 times the square root of 5. And then finally, the last ones, positive 3 times a negative 3 would give you a negative 9. Now just a reminder, the whole point of multiplying by the conjugate is that you're guaranteed that these two middle terms will always cancel out because the plus and the minus always cancel. So this one and this one cancels out, which gets rid of that square root. So what that's going to leave you with would be this. This would be equal to um, the square root of 5 minus 3. Then what's left over is 5 minus 9, which would be a negative 4, and you would be done. So your goal was to get the square root out of the denominator, and you got it out of the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. So this thing right here is called the conjugate. And actually it's the conjugate of the denominator. So this is the denominator. Now, when we rationalize the numerator, we'll multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. <clears throat> uh, but whatever you do to the top, you've got to do the same thing to the bottom. So just remember, if this is a plus 3, you put a minus 3 here. If this had been a minus 3, you'd put a plus 3 here. So that's an example of rationalizing the denominator, uh, just to remind you of the process. Okay, now what we'll look at is uh, a limit problem in which we have to use rationalizing the numerator. Let's look at that. Now the problem will look like this. It's a limit problem. You want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of this thing right here. Trouble is, when you try to plug in the 0, you wind up with division by 0 and can't do that. So you've got to find some way to get the x out of the denominator. So this whole process will be done to get this x out of the denominator right here. So we've got to find some way to eliminate this x. Now the way you'll do it, again, think of the numerator as being in parentheses. So you've got parentheses around this. And again, you're going to multiply by the conjugate, but this time we'll use the conjugate of the numerator. So what that's going to look like will be this. Now again, since this is a square root minus 1, we'll multiply it by a square root plus 1. So this is going to be the square root of x plus 1. And again, since there's a minus here, we'll put a plus out here. And again, whatever you do to the top, you've got to do the same thing to the bottom. So this is going to be the square root of x plus 1, and you're going to have a plus 1 over here. So it looks like that. Okay, now it's just a matter of running through the algebra. So let's run through that. This would be equal to the limit as x approaches 0. And again, you've got to FOIL the top. So you're going to 
foil the top. Now when you do that, you will have the following. This will be the limit of... Uh, now when you multiply the square root times the square root, the square roots will cancel out and just leave you with what's under the square root. So that's just going to turn into an x plus 1. So that's going to be the square root times the square root. Now the outer ones, you would have 1 times this, so this will be plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. And we'll extend this over just a little bit. Uh, then that's, this is, here's the first, here's the outer. Now the inner would be minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. And then finally the last, minus 1 times plus 1 would be a negative 1. Now, in the bottom, you're just going to have this one times this one, so it's going to be x times the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. So it looks like that. Now, just like in that last problem, you're guaranteed that these two middle terms will cancel out. So there are the two middle terms in the foiling process. The plus and the minus cancel out. They're gone. So what that's going to leave you with would be the following. This would be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of the following. So now here you've got an x, you've got a plus 1 and a minus 1, so these will also cancel out. So the plus 1 cancels out the minus 1, and in the numerator you're just left with an x. Well in the denominator you've got an x times square root of x plus 1, and you've got a plus 1 right here. Now, your goal, the whole reason for doing this rationalizing thing, was to get rid of this x in the denominator. Well, after going through this process, now watch what happens. Finally, you can get rid of that x. So having this x in the denominator caused the problem. Well, now, x in the top cancels out the x in the bottom, and you got rid of what was causing your problem. So what that's going to leave you with would be the following. It's going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of this. It would be 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Now at the beginning of the problem you couldn't plug in the 0 because you had division by 0. But once you rationalize the numerator and go through this process then you've eliminated that x in the bottom so now you can plug in the 0. So now go ahead and plug the 0 in for x. And what that's going to give you would be 1 over, and in place of this x, plug in the 0. You'll have the square root of 0 plus 1 plus 1. And what that will give you would be 1 over, now this would be like having 0 plus 1 would be the square root of 1 plus 1. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, so 1 plus 1 would be equal to 1 half, and that's going to be the limit. So if you find the limit as x approaches 0, uh, and again, if you can't plug a 0 in for x in the denominator, use this technique called rationalizing the numerator, and this process will eliminate this x in the denominator. That's why you did it. So these two x's cancel out. Then once you've eliminated the x in the denominator, now go ahead and plug in the 0. You can works just fine, and you wind up with uh, limit is one half. So that technique is called rationalizing the numerator, and it's just another technique for finding limits.